Hi everybody, I'm Morgan Crosby from Finch Chevrolet in London, Ontario, Canada, and you're watching Cars and Crosby. Back at it. This is the Canadian International Auto Show, and this is a matte Cadillac from the factory. We're gonna talk about this specific color and other performance Cadillacs on today's episode, starting right now. <music> Okay, Cadillac is in the house. And I've got a color I've been waiting a very, very long time to see. Ladies and gentlemen, allow me to introduce you to Maverick Noir Frost. I think of that how to lose a guy in 10 days when the, the slogan line for that, that uh, diamond campaign was frost yourself. Why not frost your vehicle with a little Maverick Noir? This is General Motors' first matte finish from the factory. I don't think a lot of wrap companies are gonna be happy about this because now I don't have to do it aftermarket. This is something that you can get right from the factory. Take a look at that. Now this isn't a cheap option. It's about $9,500 Canadian to get done, but having that done from the factory means most importantly, it's got warranty. And that to me is important when you're looking at a $100,000 vehicle that you're trying to create into a family heirloom. Now, I think that this has got a little bit of green in it. I know it says noir in the name. It's supposed to be black. It's definitely not. This is more of a gray than anything. And this is exactly why I like coming to these shows. So I got these fancy Vance production lights here that really allow you to be able to see the true colors, pardon the pun, on these colors. And I really think that, in particular, this is a sinister cool color. It's not just like a, a, a dead tone. It's not just gray, it's not just black or anything like that. You've got a little bit of color and style in it. And that's what in particular I go for. You know, you wanna be a little bit different. As the logo with slogan with uh, Cadillac goes, dare greatly, that is something that I pick up on right away with this Blackwing. Now this is a color that you can only get exclusively through the Blackwing lineup. So actually conveniently over here is its little brother. We got the CT4 Blackwing, which is over here. It's a twin turbo as opposed to this supercharged uh, LT4 over here. And uh, I have got to say, if I was looking at making a Cadillac get different and dare greatly, this would be it. I think that um, a lot of people are intimidated by the idea of having a matte finished car. I think a lot of people, especially that live in a forested area, um, are concerned mainly because of uh, tree sap and stuff like that. And I actually had a small stint at Mercedes-Benz where in our London location, I managed the lot. And um, one of the biggest things that we would combat was in the detail department was the Dizinho matte finishes. So Mercedes-Benz has been doing it for a long time. And unfortunately, if a bird takes a dump on this thing and you leave it for a long period of time, it's gonna burn the paint. This is not like a regular color where you can just let it ride and be fine. If you're used to driving a black vehicle, and this is something that I want to talk about as well, because that's my first look at the Lyric in Stellar Black Metallic. A black car is also very susceptible to stuff. So this is a Stellar Black Metallic paint as well. It's a metallic finish. If you are going to get a darker tone, always get in a metallic finish because it'll help hide the imperfections a lot better and look better on a sunny day. But this is something that will involve some maintenance. So for some people that are very black and white, again, pardon the puns here, it's not gonna be the color for you because you are paying more and having a little bit more maintenance to go with it. Not to try to pick apart the finishing department at this auto show, but already you can see on the hood here that there is a flaw. So if you're in the, in the process of trying to create something that's different from the factory that has a warranty, this is gonna be a great option. You can't wrap these vehicles because then you'll ruin the matte finish that's on here. And because this is a matte finish, it essentially means that it doesn't really have a gloss clear coat. And the clear coat is what protects a vehicle from uh, all the elements. So there's a UV component to that that allows it so that it doesn't uh, fade. In particular, red pigments are something that over time, because of UV light, will fade. And so by having this vehicle in a matte finish, you immediately have taken a layer of protection from the factory off. And that's one of the reasons why a lot of manufacturers are reluctant to do a matte finish is because 
you're setting yourself up for a more vulnerable situation. And that would have to be, in my opinion, one of the reasons why this is a $9,500 option to be done on your Cadillac. I don't know if it's less on that. I, I don't know. It might be a little bit less just because there's less paint to cover, but not normally the case. In the inside here, we have the natural interior, and this is the upgraded interior as well. The, the easy way to tell is that you have the carbon fiber backed seats that are on here and a really beautiful stitch design pattern that's in the Napa leather that's on here. We also have the carbon fiber accents on here because it's a black wing, you gotta have the carbon fiber and uh, the suede. So the suede is kind of like a matte finish for your, for your leather. You're taking a regular piece of leather, so this is a full grain Napa piece of leather, and you're cutting it in half. And the inside component of the leather is what suede is. So suede is basically just leather that's been cut in half and you're exposing it. People pay more than what a regular option color or regular interior is for suede. And in reality, it's more susceptible. So I kind of like the fact that this has got suede in here because it's going along with the theme of the outside. Not for everybody, but I can appreciate the style and the, and the, and the uh, design and the ingenuity that went into being able to have this be covered under the Cadillac warranty, which is for four years and 80,000 kilometers. Let's see what else we got here at the auto show. All right, guys, this is a bucket list moment for me here. I am in front of a Formula One car from last season. This is Valtteri Bottas's, the Finnish driver that used to be with Mercedes-Benz, but now is with Alfa Romero. So we got a Finnish driven Alfa here, which is made in the Swiss Alps. Sauber is actually the factory spec uh, team which is owned by Alfa Romeo, which is owned by Ferrari. So this is a, a Ferrari um, tier two team that's made in Switzerland. You can see you've got some Swiss homages that are on here and some Swiss um, badges in there, but this is just wild guys. Take a look at this. I've got a Formula One car in front of me. Look at the amount of downforce and the intricacy that you see on here with how they're correcting and moving all that air into the right way for them to get around the track. This is crazy. And if anyone doesn't follow Formula One that's watching my channel, let me just get you up to speed. Formula One has a larger budget than NASA. Let that sink in. These folks work and innovate on going around a track and they spend more money than we go to space in. That tells you everything about Formula One in one statement. I am absolutely blown away with this. And for the main reason, because this is tiers and levels of innovation that we're eventually gonna see in the automotive industry. When you talk about these plug-in hybrids that we see on the roads now, well, guess what? A lot of that technology was developed in these. We're using a lot of the same kind of concepts on our vehicles. You know, I look at the CT6 Blackwing, which we've done a bunch of episodes on, and it has a hot V in it. Well, Mercedes-Benz was the ones that invented a hot V where the turbos are inside of the actual V. That's just one of hundreds of different innovations that have come over the years through Formula One. So when you see this and you're watching it on a Sunday race, know that in a decade, you may have a feature that you can pay for on your car that came from these vehicles. That in itself is a really great reason why I'm featuring this on the channel. I absolutely love Formula One. And if you're interested in learning more about it, stay tuned for this season, which is coming up. A great way to catch up the speed on it is to check out Netflix's series called Drive to Survive. That's a really great in-depth analysis and breakthrough of what it takes to be a Formula One driver. These guys are sitting in a very, very low cockpit that feels like you're in a bathtub. And I just heard a great analogy from my friend over at Heated Seats. If you haven't checked out his channel on Instagram, he's a really funny guy. He says it's like being in a bathtub and looking through this little area, which is like the, the opening on a Kleenex box. And I kind of see it. And the amount of G's that this thing pulls, these things go around the corners at twice the highway speeds that you would see on the road. It's insane the amount of downforce and grip that they have on this. If it could, in some circumstance, it could easily drive upside down on, on a wall or something like that because of the amount of downforce that this has. So check out this in all of its glory. And we're gonna move on to some more heavy hitters that we have behind the scenes here. I've got an Italian Hummer over here. We've got some one of one vehicles in the back. I've got a Golf Live Read 4GT and also 
the development driver of the Ford GT's original vehicle here. Check this out, guys. It doesn't get more um, insane than being able to look at this. Sydney Taylor's Ford GT, the Kiwi. How cool is this, guys? So Ford GT's, 40, 40 inches of ground clearance. That is the height of the Ford GT. It is just... Uh, royalty in terms of automotive uh, ingenuity and this looks like an original Shelby here in original finish holy cow Carol Shelby so the gentleman that made this ended up going on to develop this with this gentleman that was the development driver and now we have a Canadian spec version which is made here in its third generation so we skipped a generation between that one over there and this one here but as you can see there's a two in front of the vin number and that's because these are made in vaughan ontario which is where we are in ontario right around here in toronto essentially so a really really cool piece of um automotive history we've got a little dutch classic over here another ford gt in a gold finish a lexus lfa which has one of the fastest revving engines of all time it's a naturally aspirated v10 the Reventon, which is probably my favorite Lambo. All the Lamborghinis have been named after bulls. So the Reventon was actually one of the most revered bulls of all time in bullfighting. And this is a matte finish Reventon. By far, one of the coolest vehicles ever built. And uh, it's in the flesh here at the Canadian International Auto Show. So if you guys are in town and you're wanting to check out some amazing pieces of automotive history, an Elva, which is an open-topped McLaren, Check out this. See that little review mirror there on the front of it? And another Golf Livery. An Elva is another car that like, there might be a couple of these around. Let's just check the VIN number. This is number 11 off the line. I'd hate to hit a bug doing 200 in this, but I'd be doing it in style. That is pretty wild. All right, let's go check out some things that we actually came here for. I got a little sidetracked, but I think it's for a good reason, and I think you guys will agree. Oh, another Formula One great homage uh, McLaren here. We got a Senna. One of the coolest things about the Senna is the windows on the vehicle. The window doesn't roll down all the way. So they have, I, I believe they call this the drive-through window. So this is the actual window. This whole part doesn't, doesn't go down. It's only this component here. And it's also see-through here. So um, not, not many vehicles that I know of that have a, a door. Actually, you know what? Truckers. Trucks have doors like that where you can look down through the door. So this and a semi-truck have something in common which as I, I definitely don't think that you thought that when you're gonna watch this video, that I was gonna compare a semi-truck to a McLaren Senna. Let's go through here, I, I can't stop. This is really great. We've got a Viper, I think this is probably an ACR, which is one of the, yes, it is an ACR. This is one of the fastest Vipers of all time. They've obviously discontinued the Viper lineup. We're gonna let this gentleman take a shot and then we're gonna go through. Another piece of automotive royalty. We've got the king of the Raris. Holy cow. This is just absolutely incredible. Oh man, that's something else. Look at that. I'm speechless with this one. This is just such a beautiful car. Oh my God. And then we've got our Italian made Hummer over here. We've got 16.4 liters of displacement. This is four Volkswagen Corrado engines made it together. So you've got two V8 engines that are slapped together and those V8 engines are V6 Corrados from the Volkswagen group that they knocked off a cylinder and made them four cylinders. So there's a V6 engine called the Corrado. It was a great engine. They knocked two cylinders off of it, slapped them together, made a V8, and then slapped the two V8s together. And I say that nonchalantly that they slapped it. They obviously put some care into it uh, when they made these in France. But this is, this is essentially uh, two, four, six, eight engines. How cool is that, guys? 16.4 liters of displacement. This was the fastest car in the world at the time. These tires are glued onto the actual wheel here. They're magnesium wheels. I believe it's about $20,000 for a set. And at full throttle, they only last about 10 minutes, which is just an insane stat to think of because this thing can go over 200 miles an hour, which is just insane. So we've got our Italian Hummer over here. We're gonna go down the line. We're gonna see Pesto, which is my friend from Scarphone. If you haven't checked out his Instagram, please check it out. He's an amazing guy and he's got a cool amount of photography done. He's very tasteful in his photography. As you can see from his green on tan finish here, which is a really great combination. And he's also a fan of bringing green back 
You got to bring green back, guys. We need more green vehicles. And our friend Lucas is definitely a fan of doing that. And I'm happy to see that. So let's go back over to, uh, oh, I guess we'll go over here and we'll see what we got over here. All right, guys, we're in the fancy pants area and I'm supposed to be refined and dignified in this area because we're at grand touring automobiles. But I don't know about you. All I can see is a unibrow when I look at this Konitzeg. That windshield wiper in the center of it, to me, stands out like a sore thumb. It's an amazing vehicle, don't get me wrong. And yes, if I had the ability to get one, I would probably get one. But do you not think that that looks a little weird having the windshield wiper right in the middle? I just think of a unibrow on a, on a supermodel and that's all I can see. And from the auto show, we go to Finch Cadillac for another Blackwing manual. Just as a public service announcement to anyone considering buying a Blackwing from Finch Cadillac, know that we will not accept your order if it's an automatic. We will only accept it if it's a manual because that's the only way that this car should be built. A Blackwing in radiant red tint coat. Tint coat meaning that there's three different layers and on the top clear coat, it has got a tint of the red in it. So that is what a tint coat means. It is not that it's three coats, but it, well it is three coats, but tint re refers to adding pigment to the last clear coat layer, which is there for protection. And that, is actually a great thing to talk about because we just learned about Maverick Noir Frost, which does not have a clear coat. And then the other fancy pants version of our paints, which does involve clear coat, is where the pigment from the paint is added to the clear coat. So that's what a tint coat means. This is a black wing in radiant red, and we've got bronze calipers. So that is the cool addition to this one. And because of that, the key fobs are going to not be in a edge red like on mine, but they're gonna be in a bronze finish. Some options that we've done to this, we've painted the mirror caps black, so very similar program to what we do on the Corvettes. We have a Napa leather interior in this, so this is an option to choose the jet black, but it is not the carbon fiber backed ones. That is a $7,000 option, this is a $3,000 option. So these seats are upgraded, you can see a beautiful um, kind of diamond stitch pattern that you'd see on like a Designo. Um, Mercedes-Benz or on our platinum level Escalades. You'll see that we've got our obviously amazing um, carbon fibre. And then this is like our stealth interior from our Corvettes, but it's an AKG sound system, not a Bose Performance Series sound system. So that is the biggest difference for the sound system on here. And uh, well, I've already talked about it quite a bit. It's a manual transmission, which is gonna be amazing. I love how they machine out the top of this for the gear selectors. That to me is a really great touch. And then here are the keys, like I was mentioning, now done in bronze because the calipers on here are done in tech bronze. So very nicely done. I'm gonna get this in the car hauler now and we're off to the customer's house. All right, Datalac V. Well, we got a lot of things to talk about. This is kind of funny. I'm not using my own Datalac V to talk about this, but it's here, it's under pretty lights. And there's a lot of things that I actually wanna to talk to you guys about that are being showcased right now. The lighting system that is on the new Cadillac Escalade V, in particular the V model in the Canadian spec, has got a lot of future tech that from people in Europe will already know about, but anyone that is down in America is gonna learn about very soon. And I'm talking about the advanced lighting systems and the changes that have come to it. On the Cadillacs now, we have the ability for when you are driving down the road to block out or to dim down oncoming traffic. And I gotta admit, I was going through the uh, vehicle settings on my Datalac V a couple days ago, and I accidentally had some of them turned off. And I'm gonna show you guys right now where they are in here and how the description of these work. It's, in my opinion, very smart that they've changed around um, the infotainment system and the descriptions when you're in the settings. So I'm gonna go from settings to vehicle, and then I'm gonna go right down to lighting. And in here, you're gonna see a bunch of new settings. We already had ambient lighting. My favorite is to put it in hot tub mode where it just cycles through all the different colors, through anywhere that you see a break in the materials. So in the cup holders, in the foot wells, over on the door, you can see it's changing colors. That's the ambient lighting. But what we're talking about is right over here. And embarrassingly, for about a month, I had it on Brit mode. It was on the wrong way. So this is also a public service announcement to anyone that has the new advanced lighting systems that are on um, 
uh, all of our Cadillacs coming up. So adaptive forward lighting would be the name of the option that you could choose. And you need to make sure that you have it on the right setting for your country. So if you're in Bahamas, if you're in Japan, if you're in um, Britain, you need to make sure that you've got it on the other side because of that specific setting, meaning that it's going to dim down for oncoming traffic. Now, another thing that we have on here is curve lighting, which is something that we've actually had for a while. We've called it different things over the course of the years, but it's pretty self-explanatory. When I make a turn of the light or the steering wheel, the light is going to also curve with the vehicle. And then the last thing that we have over here is IntelliBeam, which is an adaption or a rendition of our Twilight Sentinel, which is actually a Cadillac first. There's a lot of them out there and Cadillac was the first for this as well. I'm talking about starter motors. I'm talking about windshield wipers, tip of the hat, putting a feather in it. That's Cadillac. Another one that we had, we developed in the eighties was Twilight Sentinel, which is what we call now IntelliBeam, where if there's someone that's coming on, coming to you, the high beams will come on high and low. So you can thank Cadillac for that invention. And it's an, uh, an adaptive system that you have available on here as well. So those are the changes to the lighting system that are coming on the North American specs. Uh, they're already here in Canada, but they're going to be coming in particular to America very shortly. And it was because of some laws that the Department of Transportation had that we um, what we uh, had to, to, uh, to not have them on there. So in terms of performance specs from Cadillac, that's all I've got to report on. This color in particular has blown me away. And uh, I think that there's going to be some people out there that will dare greatly and get this color. So I'm Morgan Crosby from Finch Chevrolet. I hope you guys enjoyed this content. Stay tuned for more and happy motoring.